Okay class, today we're talking about hardwood cutting. So the first thing you want to think about is harvesting your material. And so this hardwood cuttings were taken during the dormant season. These happen to be grapes. They're hemrod. They were tagged right after they were uh, cut. They've been kept in a cool dormant place and a paper towel wrapped around the bottom. Uh, that cool place was a refrigerator. And so we can process these when we want. Hardwood cuttings are very forgiving. There's no leaves, there's no transpiration occurring um, to offset the fact that there's no, no roots. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to put roots on these um, quickly. So the most ideal way to put roots on a hardwood cutting is um, cool, moist conditions up top and uh, warm conditions below. The warm conditions below in the media will help roots to form in callus. And so we have this material here. Uh, it's all tagged, it's all labeled. Um, I have here some Cabernet grape cuttings. Here's an example of a hardwood cutting. So what you have to make certain that you have is uh, one node, this is where a set of leaves were, uh, below the ground and one set above because that's where the buds are going to come. In the case of this Cabernet cutting, we could make five or six, but we want some size to them because this is the size container we're going to be putting them in. And again, I've tagged it, the date, February 11th, Grape Cabernet, it's a wine grape. And these are going for the sale, that's the first week in May. And so ideally, we want to get these started, we want to get roots on them, and leafed out, rooted out in time for the sale, but not sitting in here for many, many months becoming root bound. This pot is deep, which forces the roots to go down. These, these holes are big here at the bottom, which results in some air pruning. And so what we're going to do you take your trusty pruners, you've cleaned these off, you've sterilized them, you're looking for uniformity. So in this case, I might do something about the size of these pruners, looking at these uh, spacing on the nodes. So I'm going to cut above a bud. Here is the bud. There's actually three buds there. You get three chances for this to occur. Uh, and then I have a bud here, so I could cut this here and roots would come from the bottom and from the top. But these are kind of deep pots, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to force two into top growth, and I'm going to force two into uh, root growth. To do that, you got to make sure you cut that bud out. Sometimes you can just rub it out, but you want to change it from being vegetative to eventually becoming um, roots. And so I'll rub out the bottom one as well. And so you got, you got opportunity for roots to come out here, here, and from the cut end on the bottom. You have potential for buds to come out here and here. And not only do you have primary buds, but you have secondary buds and tertiary buds in there. So the primary buds will come out. They'll come out fast and strong. And so again, that's why we're timing this, planting on February 11th to coincide with an early May sale. If we were planning on sticking these and moving them on, bumping them up, we talked about transplanting into larger containers, we would start them here, move them on. We might even do them in flats like we were doing with the softwood cuttings and then pull them out when they're calloused and rooted. So the first thing that's going to happen is uh, we're going to assist the rooting process. Dormant hardwood cuttings and especially grapes uh, do really well. I have some wisteria, I have some figs, uh, we're going to do some blackberries. Uh, we can do a number of different hardwood uh, type cuttings. And so what we're going to do is we're going to dust these to speed up the process. So I've taken some Hormex rooting powder. I've put it in a separate baggie. Normally I'd make about five or ten of these, bundle them together, stick them in here. I want to just dust it around and not cake it on, but just lightly dusted. You don't want to breathe this stuff. You want to wear a mask if you're if you're doing a lot of these. So this is lightly dusted, now I'm going to bury it this deep. I don't want to just push it straight down into my soil pot, so what I've done ahead of time is I've hollowed out a little spot. I used a marker when I did it last time, and now I'm going to insert my cutting. I'm going to pinch the soil around here, and again, the conditions that I'm going to provide for this grape are going to be cool and moist up top, and warm down below. Being in a black pot on a black uh, you know, table or expanded metal table 
Hopefully they'll warm up enough below and roots will come out. Grapes are pretty easy. Uh, if I was worried about this, I would put them on the heat mat. Some of our more tricky uh, hardwood cuttings, we will put on the, the heat mat to facilitate that process. And the soil, the media that I've chosen to put in this pot is sterile because we don't want to uh, encourage any disease issues in a controlled environment situation. But we have an equal mixture of perlite and peat. We have 50-50, so this is going to drain well. To keep the tops cool, I'm going to spray and mist these. The goal is, is for the cut end, the cut end, these cells, the hormone rooting powder is going to help, but from that cut end, those cells are going to change from vegetative cells to rooting cells, and then those cells are going to push roots out. We hope they'll callus and root before the top buds come out. And typically, the top buds will come out about the same time as the roots, and then you'll have success. But if you take um, too much top or leave too many nodes in the top and not enough below the soil, it could be the opposite. Your foliage will come out because there's a lot of stored energy in this cutting. They'll push out foliage. I could lay this on the ground, uh, moist and damp, this will start to swell out and bud out and it'll never form roots. It'll leaf out and then it'll die. You want the roots first. So you might err on the side of having more root potential below ground and less buds above ground. I like to do 50-50 on grapes so I can do this whole thing uniform and then I can sell this all as a uniform crop so each one looks the same. Everyone's tagged. One of the things too when you're going out and you're getting deciduous dormant hardwood cuttings, for instance, um, this is flame seedless. We've been planting flame out here in our experimental uh, orchard. And so flame is readily available. It's a good seedless, cold tolerant grape. This is the time of year when people are pruning these type of dormant deciduous plants frequently. This, this is a byproduct from the plant. And so you're making asexual reproduction occur by making clones of the parent plant. Flame is desirable and it, it's also, I know the source because I pull it right from my, my own source. If you're going around and you're picking uh, dormant hardwood cuttings from neighbors and friends and open landscapes, you have to be careful that you're not introducing disease into your controlled environment. So on a small scale, you're doing this for yourself have at it. On a larger scale, more commercial scale like this, we're like mini end of commercial, we're going to use a fungicide to make sure I didn't bring in any um, scary disease from the outside world. There's some scary things going on in the grape world around here. We don't want that here. We don't want to be the ones that introduce that. That applies to any production going on in a greenhouse in a controlled environment. All right, so I'm also inspecting these, making sure there's not any insects or visible disease um, damage. Okay, so in class, students are going to be propagating all this hardwood material. Verdi, you're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to fill up a whole table of containerized um, dormant hardwood cuttings, and we'll see the production potential for that. Uh, this is something that's really, really easy to do. You don't need a fancy greenhouse and a fancy mist system. You just need to make sure the tops are cooler than the bottoms, get the bottoms to root out, and then you'll have... Um, foliage supported by, by the roots. All right, thank you.